Monday's senseless violence and the victims, uh, you know, obviously there was so many victims lost, so many people affected. Now, Victim Services Toronto is among the first on scene after police and ambulance to help deal with this sort of, this sort of tragedy. Now, Bobby, Bobby McMurich uh, from uh, Victim Services joins me with a little bit more. Bobby, this is one of, you, you guys are a, a service that I don't think people really know much about, hear much about. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you guys normally do? Uh, so, Victim Services Toronto is a charitable nonprofit organization. We work in close partnership with the Toronto Police Service and many, many, many community partners. Our mandate is to provide the immediate um, crisis intervention um, response to safety services immediately following a crime or sudden tragedy. And that is to the direct victims, family members, witnesses, and the broader community. And, and that is, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, first responders deal with the event as it's happening and then right. kind of the instant after effects and the investigations. You're dealing with it in the weeks and months afterwards, right? We're talking about the ripple effects. Um, we're actually working with it immediately following the event. So what, when the scene is actually secure is when we will arrive on scene um, mm -hmm. at re on request. Right. On request, of course, and, and it's a voluntary process. Um, and so the crisis response program works with individuals as, as a triage process. Uh, so it's very short term. Mm -hmm. And during that process, what we'll do is we'll help them address their immediate urgent practical and safety needs right so um, following that particular part what we'll do is we'll help them connect with longer term services in the community right. and if they're particularly vulnerable we will um, assign a case coordinator within our organization to work with them longer term as well that's so important that's that yeah. it's the it's the it's setting people in the right direction yes and making sure that they get the help they need and then it, again yes. it's not it's not, not just the victims themselves, uh, it's not just their families, it's people that witnessed, exactly. it's people that were in the area, it's people that live there that are afraid yes. to go out and walk on the street. That's right, right. And there are also people that are triggered mm -hmm. uh, from prior uh, past traumatic experiences. Can you talk a little bit about that? So, so that's, a, that's an interesting uh, phenomenon that I think we're really kind of just learning a little bit more about. Right. Um, yeah, so people who have had prior traumatic incidents, it may not have been crime related, but... Uh, it's hard for them to know what exactly is going to trigger them down the road. Um, but certainly if, if, let's say, someone was um, hit as a pedestrian um, and very badly injured, and then this incident occurs, it would, re it would actually potentially send them back to that place they were at when they were right in the throes of the trauma following that incident for them. Right. Yeah. So if you are somebody that witnessed this, you are a member of a family, mm -hmm. uh, you were triggered by this. Yes. How do we get in touch with you? So um, anyone can call us. Our, our general number is open to anyone to call. And um, they will, uh, the phone is answered by a professional social worker or a really extensively trained volunteer. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, we got the number on the screen there. It's 416-808-7066 if you want to make that phone call. Uh, Bobby McMurrick, thank you so much for, uh, for coming on today. Thank we really you for appreciate having it. Me. And thank, thank you for you. all the work you do. Thank you. Truly appreciate it. Uh, let's throw it up in the newsroom to Mel.